Good day, everybody. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. So we have opened up the abdomen. This is a supine cadaver. We are standing on the right side. The camera person is also on the right side. You can see this yellow structure here. This is the greater omentum. These are the coils of the small intestine here. This is the liver that we can see here. And in front of us, we can see the stomach here and a little bit of the duodenum. And of course, on the sides, we can see a little bit of the large intestine. Now let's come to the stomach proper. We can see the stomach here. This is the anterior surface of the stomach. This portion is the region of the cardia of the stomach, where the esophagus meets the stomach. This portion where my finger is tracing, this is the fundus of the stomach. From the fundus, this portion is the body of the corpus of the stomach. This region is the pyloric antrum. I have picked up this thick structure here with my finger. This is the pylorus, which contains the pyloric sphincter. And after that, it continues as the first part of the duodenum. This is the greater curvature of the stomach. And to the greater curvature of the stomach, as I mentioned, is it as the greater omentum. And running along this will be the gastrofibular vessels, which I shall show just now. This is the lesser curvature of the stomach. And the lesser curvature of the stomach also has got attached the lesser omentum with its two parts. And running within the layers are the gastric vessels. If you were to trace the lesser curvature of the stomach, we find that at one place, it is the most dependent. And there's a notch there. Vertically most dependent portion of the lesser curvature, which has got a notch, is called the incisura angularis. And if we were to take an imaginary line and drop it down to the greater curvature, till that much is the body of the stomach. And after that is the pyloric antrum. And thereafter is the pylorus. These are the parts of the stomach seen from front. My finger now is in the omental bursa, the lesser sac, and this is the posterior surface of the stomach. That brings me to what is known as the bed of the stomach. The bed of the stomach are the contents which are behind the lesser sac and on which the stomach is situated. To mention some of the organs on the bed of the stomach, we have the pancreas, which we cannot see here. We have the left kidney, left suprarenal, spleen, the left dome of the diaphragm, the transverse mesocolon, splenic artery. So these are the contents of the bed of the stomach, which also incidentally happen to be the posterior wall of the omental bursa or the lesser sac. Now let us show you the blood vessels of the stomach. We have separated out the blood vessels from the greater curvature, and we can see this blood vessel here. This is the right gastroepiploic artery which runs on the greater curvature from right to left. This is the branch of the gastroduodenal artery, which comes from behind the duodenum. And as it runs on the greater curvature from right to left, it anastomoses with this artery that we can see here, and I picked it up here. This is the left gastroepiploic artery, and this runs from left to right, and both of them anastomose in the greater curvature. They give multiple gastric branches, and we can see the gastric branches here, and they also give numerous omental branches. You can see them here. That's why it is referred to as gastroepiploid, is also referred to as gastroomental artery. Then we have the next set of arteries which are running in the lesser curvature. And for that, I have removed some of the fibers of the lesser omentum, and we can see this artery here. This is the left gastric artery, which is the smallest branch of the celiac trunk. And we can see it is running from left to right on the lesser curvature. It was within the layers of the lesser omentum. It's also giving an esophageal branch. And this is the anastomosing with this artery here. This is the right gastric artery, which comes from the hepatic artery proper. And this runs from right to left, and they anastomose here. So these are the main branches. Additionally, the stomach also receives branches from the splenic artery, the posterior gastric arteries. And it also receives branches called vasa brevia, which are located near the fundus of the stomach, which also arise from the splenic artery. We are going to open up the stomach and I'm going to show you the interior of the stomach. But before that, let me just quickly mention, there are many clinical correlations pertaining to the stomach. There are hundreds and thousands of surgeries. I'll just mention the simplest procedure that we do in the stomach and that is what is known as a feeding gastrostomy. If for some reason the patient cannot swallow food, then we have to put in a tube into the stomach to feed the patient and that's called a feeding gastrostomy. In the earlier days, we used to open the stomach and we used to put in a tube. Nowadays, it is done endoscopically. We put in an endoscope through the esophagus and through the skin, we put a local anesthesia and we insert the gastrostomy tube and we bring it out. And that is known as endoscope-assisted percutaneous feeding gastrostomy. So this is one of the simplest procedures. And of course, nowadays, a lot of bariatric weight reduction surgery is being performed on the stomach. Assistants have done a wonderful job of opening up the stomach here. And we are looking at the interior of the stomach. So first, let me show you quickly the layers of the stomach. And this is the place where we can see the layers of the stomach reasonably clearly. The outermost layer that you see here, this is the serosa, which is the visceral peritoneum. Then we have the muscular layer, outer longitudinal, inner circular smooth muscle. Then we have the submucosa, and finally we have the mucosa. 
If you were to take a look at the mucosa, you find that in this particular cadaver, the mucosa is very smooth. Ideally, it should be thrown into folds and those are called gastric rugae. Closer to the fundus of the stomach, we can see that the stomach mucosa is thrown into folds. And we can see that here, these are called the gastric rugae. The purpose of the rugae is to increase the surface area of the stomach mucosa and to allow for movement of the stomach. If we were to take a look at the mucosa across the lesser curvature of the stomach, we find that they are more regular, they are more smooth and they are more parallel. This special area of the mucosa is referred to as the gastric canal, which allows preferential passage of liquids from the stomach into the duodenum. To continue, we have made the incision right across the antrum into the duodenum. Here we can see the pyloric sphincter where my instrument is tracing. And if you were to take a close look, we can see that the muscle of the pyloric sphincter is the thicker and smooth muscle of the stomach. So this constitutes the pyloric sphincter. And this ridge that we see here, this is the cut open pyloric sphincter. So therefore, this marks the junction between the stomach and the duodenum. So this is the pyloric sphincter. And this is the one which gets hypertrophied in newborn babies in the condition known as congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. So these are all the points which I want to mention to you in this dissection of the abdomen. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. If you know the camera person, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.